You're listening to Brandon Sports Talk, interviewing professional athletes and Paralympians and Olympians. And now for your professional athlete interview and your host, Brandon P. But yeah. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the US, USA's beach handball, Kristen Mansour. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Brandon. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in playing in professional beach handball? Sure. Uh, so I guess I'll provide a little background myself just to put it into context. Um, I grew up playing a ton of different sports. Uh, my main two sports in high school were volleyball and basketball Then I ended up playing basketball in college. And while I was playing, you know, I, I heard about this sport called team handball and I watched it in the Olympics and I just immediately fell in love with it. And so I ended up switching over to team handball, uh, from basketball and I haven't looked back. And so I started a little bit with indoor handball, but then I found out there was beach handball and I grew up on the beach down in Naples, Florida, and always have had an affinity for being outside and obviously competing hard. So combining the two elements just made sense for me. And, uh, that was back in 2018 when I found beach handball back when I, I was living in San Diego at the time. And it's taken me all over the world since. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really grateful for uh, the sport and kind of being at the ground ground level of the sport, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Of course, what was that experience like going to Harvard and first playing D1 basketball at Harvard? Yeah, it was great. You know, my main two focuses in high school were academics and sports. And so to be able to combine the two was a phenomenal experience. And being that campus is beautiful. I met a lot of amazing people and I just, you know, I had had the time of my life. Um, so it's, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Cold though, you know, growing up in South Florida, it was quite the change being up in the Northeast uh, with all the rain and snow and cold. So uh, when I had four years of that, I knew it was time to move to a, to a warmer client. So climate. So that's why I ended up in California. While at Harvard, what was that experience like getting to play indoor handball on the club level? Yeah, so that was, um, so I actually, I, I played basketball for a year, decided to to pivot and, and look for other opportunities. And that's when I found indoor handball or yeah, indoor team handball. And there wasn't a team. And so I had to start a team while I was at Harvard and it was an awesome experience. You know, it was even though I, I was the captain and the founder of the team, I, I didn't really know how to play the sport. And so I was actually reliant on my teammates who mostly were international students who had grown up with handball because it's not a popular sport here in the States. So I was actually learning way more from them and watching YouTube videos and trying to run these practices when I, you know, was learning on the fly. So it was, it was a great experience overall and kind of my first taste into really how entrepreneurial you have to be to to play this sport in the U S specifically. So it was a great experience all the way around. How is that experience like for you going to school and being a student and then getting to start up this club from the ground up and is the club still active to this day? Yeah. So it was a big learning experience. It was kind of like starting your own business. Uh, so it was my, my first real taste into, I guess the world of entrepreneurialism in a sports sense, um, and in terms of this, the club going on, I, I do believe people are still playing, you know, as the collegiate circuit is growing, I think they are still competing. I'm not sure how many tournaments they're playing in. I, it's been a while. I graduated in 2015, so it's been some time <laughs> since I was there. So I haven't been keeping close tabs, but I think it's still around. What was that experience like after graduating from Harvard and getting to be on the U.S. beach handball team nationally? 
Yeah, it was, you know, it's such an honor to represent the United States of America um, and, and play a sport. You know, it's interesting because it's not a mainstream sport. And so that's kind of what I always go back to is that entrepreneurial mindset. You really have to love the nitty gritty elements of it too, because it's not like, it's not fully paid for. Oftentimes we have to pay for our own flights, for example, and, in, in you know, if we're lucky, the hotel and everything is covered once we're at the tournaments, but you really have to be a self-starter to play the sport. And so I love that element of it. Of course, I'd love for it to be paid. We're, we're looking for sponsors <laughs> actively. So I would definitely not say no to that, but, you know, in terms of the mindset and, you know, being on the ground floor of the sport, but also competing at the highest level too, you know, it's, it's, there are some really amazing athletes in the sport that you also have to have that same mindset too, is like, we're pushing the sport forward literally with each tournament that we compete in and each piece of media that we're creating on our social media accounts. You know, it's really that energy. That's that I, I think I love most about playing the sport. What was that feeling like for you to get to put on that beach handball uniform and have team USA on it? Just, a dream, you know, it was a dream come true. My first summer, um, we had two very large international tournaments. One was our regional qualifier for the world championships. And the other one, was the ANOC world beach games in Qatar. And that was, you know, not just a beach handball tournament. That was sport disciplines, uh, m- many sport dis- disciplines. I think there were over like a hundred different countries. There's so many people there that we, that was the first tournament and first time really where I was like, whoa, I, I'm, I'm representing the United States, you know, and just playing in a national team. That's when it really sunk in. That was back in 2019. So it's just every time I slip on that U S uniform, it's like, there's weight to it. You know, it it means so much. And I, I, yeah, it's not something I take lightly and, and none of my teammates take lightly. And so just a huge honor. What was that feeling like for you to get to compete in that beach cup? It was, it was amazing. It felt like a mini Olympics. You know, we were at in an athlete village and in Qatar, they really do it up. <laughs> they they spent a lot of money in the tournament and the lodging and the food and everything. So it was, you know, it felt like we were in the beach Olympics, you know? And so there were some Olympians there as well, but playing in the beach discipline of their sport. So it, it was just such a cool, cool experience. And and actually, unfortunately, this year, that same tournament was canceled. It was supposed to be hosted in Bali. And so just so disappointing for, for athletes around the world who to get that experience, you know, either for the first time or again after the inaugural one in Qatar. Such a bummer. But the event is incredible. So I hope I hope they reschedule it um, next year or sometime soon. As you talked about playing in that, what was that experience like getting to play alongside some of those Olympians that you saw in those tournaments? Motivating, I would say, and humbling for sure. Um, it, it was just, you know, playing with the top athletes around the world is always such a learning experience, but also highlights where you can improve, uh, especially touching on the fact that it's not, you, handball is not a big store, sport in the States. A lot of us, played collegiate sports other than handball because that wasn't an option and came together later in life. Whereas we're competing against players who have been, who grow, who have grown up with handball. So, and their team has been training a ton together. You know, everyone on my team kind of lives in different parts of the country. So it's difficult for us to get together and train. Whereas we're competing against other teams that train every week, you know? And so it's, it's always, that's always a difficult element of playing with the U S against other teams, but, um, we make it work. We're getting better and better. So how has it been so. like obviously being a part of the European tour and getting to go to Europe and getting to see different countries? That's a great question um, because it's honestly been one of the most fulfilling you know, aspects of my life. Um, every summer I get to go over to Europe and be based there and travel to a myriad of different countries. Um, and you know, it's the, the the level of handball there is the highest in the world. And so I wouldn't be the player I am today if I don't spend my summers there training, competing. Um, and it's, it's just such a joy and you get to see so many different cultures and experience different, like taste different foods and different views and just different ways of life. Um, especially in Europe, everything is so condensed and you can take a road trip 
and go see a ton of different cultures in just a couple of days. So it's an amazing place to play. And I, I love it. As a player of handball, what has that experience been like getting to be on that global handball tour and going to different countries to play around the world? Yeah. So it's, you know, it, just like with any sport, you kind of, you have the national team and then you have your club team and players oftentimes play, you know, you play on both. And so with the U S national team, we've been to some amazing places like Trinidad and Tobago, Qatar, like I mentioned, um, we've played in Greece for the world championships last year. And so we get to travel to many different countries around the world. And then with this club team that I play on, um, that I actually started a couple of years ago, uh, for Americans to have the opportunity to come play in Europe. Um, that is where we really get to play within the European circuit and, play in the club club level circuit. And so with that, I've, uh, with that team, I've been to almost, I don't want to say all countries in Europe, but like a good, I would say like 75% of countries in Europe, just through our beach handball team or club team. So it's great exposure to different cultures and different styles of play. You know, we'll play in Spain and Portugal, and that's very different than playing in Eastern Europe and Poland and Hungary, for example, versus northern europe which you have the netherlands germany scandinavia so it's cool to get different exposures of styles of play and um just the travel experience too it's just it's phenomenal what was your experience like in 2020 getting to play in greece in the if ihf world championship that was that was an incredible experience again you know it, it was our team really came together um you know playing in crete one of the islands of greece just was so beautiful. And, um, you know, it, it's that, you know, I think there were 16 teams, 16 of the top beach handball teams from around the world who compete in the world championships. And, uh, you know, it, it's just always such a huge learning experience and great team bonding too. You know, we rented a huge Airbnb. It's like a compound that we went there a week before and did training some with, with some teams there. And, um, just, those are the experiences that you, will carry with you for the rest of your life, you know, just so special to be somewhere so beautiful and play a sport at the highest level with your friends. It, it's just, yeah, that was, that was a special tournament for sure. Of course, for my listeners that don't know, how do you play the sport of beach handball? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, if you first look at it, it looks like chaos. Like you've, you've got people running on and off of court, you've got the goalies in goalies out, you know, balls are flying. So it's really just a matter of breaking it down into offense and defense. And so focusing on one half of the court at a time. So you always have four players versus four players on the defense. Um, one of those four players is the goalie and the other three players are the court players who are playing defense against the offensive players in the court. And then for the offense, you have the four players. And then you also have someone who's called the specialist who's wearing a different color Jersey. And so that makes it interesting in terms of the defense because you are really a man down, but then you also have to worry about this specialist person who basically the way the point system works transitioning to, to offense is you can either score one point if you are wearing a regular color jersey and you just shoot like a normal handball shot. However, there's three different ways to score two point shots. And that is if you are the specialist, you're wearing a different color jersey. If you just shoot a normal handball shot, that's two points. So they're clearly like very, you know, the defense is very focused on them. However, the two other ways to score two points um, include alley oops. So an alley oop is something if I pass to you, you catch it in midair and you score before you land outside of the goalie box, that's two points. Another way to score two points is if I have the ball and you're the goalie and I go up to the goalie line and I jump and I do a 360 in the air and I shoot before I land, that's also two points. And so these all constitute as spectacular goals, which is what they're actually defined in as in the beach handball dictionary, which is so it just, it sounds like a couple of guys got high in their basement and like figured out these rules for this game that just ended up being like one of the funnest games I've ever played in my life. And so it's funny because it just sounds unreal when I'm talking about it. And then when you see it too, it's like, I always get questions like, why are people spinning and what, like the, the, the oops, like what is up with that? And so it's, it's all to get two points, which is literally written into the rules. And so it's just, 
it's so fun. And it's, I think it's the only sport that I know that has objective style points. Like obviously you have dancing and you have ballet and gymnastics where you have judges and it's pretty, I mean, it's objective to a point until it's not. And then it is subjective. This this sport is like, there are like, you have to release the ball before you land to get the two points in the alley-oop for the 360, your feet have to be facing the goalie for, and do a complete 360 for it to be two points. It can't like refs will call one point when your feet are like, it's, it's like a 270 spin. So it's, it's just, it's cool. It makes for a really creative playmaking and it's just also really fun to watch. Of course, so how do you transition from playing indoor handball where you're on a court to getting into the sand and playing in beach handball? Yeah, so there's a few key differences between indoor and beach. Uh, and so one of the biggest differences is the no contact rule beach handball versus the full contact in indoor. So you can't touch players when you're on the sand. And so it really constitutes as a, a non-contact sport. Um, and you can get thrown out of the game if you do make an aggressive hard contact, like physical contact with the players. So that's the biggest difference other than the surface, you know, obviously an in indoor handball, it's a hard surface. You can bounce the ball and you can do bounce passes and beach handball. You can't bounce the ball that easily because obviously it's sand, different levels and different angles. However, I do see some fancy players doing some bounces and doing some, one of my teammates last summer. She just started playing beach handball. She played indoor handball her whole life. And she made this sick bounce pass in the sand that somehow worked out perfectly because oftentimes it doesn't because of all the divots and all the different angles the sand creates. And it was just the coolest thing, but you never see that really in beach handball because it's typically impossible. So, you know, and also, you know, playing in sand exerts, I read a stat, it's 2.7 times the energy than you would moving on a hard surface. So it's just innately harder to move in the sand and to jump into, you know, be quick as, as you would be on a hard surface playing indoor or handball. So it's, there's a few key distinctions between the two sports that I think make it more fun to play beach handball. I fully transitioned to beach handball. I, I don't play anymore indoor. Um, cause I just, I love it so much. So yeah. Of course, with playing beach handball, do you primarily play in states like Florida and the California where primarily beach is there? Um, yeah, in the US, you know, we're still in the process of growing the the US beach handball tour because right now it's kind of sporadic with different tournaments that are in different places. But, you know, I know there's a tournament in Kentucky, which is random, but it really just depends on who loves the sport and where they're located cuz like I said, when you're in the sport, you have to be, you know, motivated to pave your path and create opportunities for yourself to play. So, yeah, I mean, I, there are tournaments in um, Michigan also randomly enough, you know, in the summer, of course, it'd be hard to play in the winter. Um, and Florida, I would say predominantly like now it's been California because there's a large, con large contingency of our players who live out there. So they, they oftentimes set up trainings and tournaments and stuff like that. So I would say mostly California for now. I know Florida's there's a tournament in Florida and South Florida. One of my teammates also is putting on, um, in November. So that's, you know, we're trying to grow the Florida scene too, because there's so much beach space. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, yeah, I, I think it just depends on where people are and ideally, you know, warm places with, with beaches, which is typically California and Florida. What does a typical game day look like for you on the beach volleyball side? So a typical day, um, you know, so our tournaments, so I'll just kind of speak to like tournament day. Um, the games are 20 minutes. It's something I forgot to include. They're quick, they're action packed in their 20 minutes and with 10 minute halves. And so that means you can play multiple games during the day. I think the most I've ever played was five games in one day. So, you know, it's, it's always, you know, in the morning, always staying hydrated. You're always, you're playing outside, you're in the sun, you're exerting so much energy in the sand. So I would always, you know, take an electrolyte the first one of the day. I always try to drink at least three. If I have a, a lot of games, I'll, I'll aim to drink three electrolytes, like waters during the day, but in the morning, have a good breakfast um, make sure all the proteins and, and stuff like that. And so during the day, it's really just like 
kind of you're waiting, waiting, waiting. And then like 20 minutes before the game, then you start warming up. You play the game for 20 minutes and then you're done. And then wait, 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 warm up 20 minutes. So it's kind of like a groundhog day experience where it's just like, okay, you got to get super focused and then relax and super focused, but like still also staying focused through the day. So it's kind of a mind twist, like these tournaments, because it's just, you don't play one game and you're done. You like, you have to constantly be like staying hydrated and staying focused and being in the game, in the tournament. Of course, with playing multiple games in one day, how do you keep the momentum of playing alive? It's a great question, Brandon. If you have the answer to that, please let me know. <laughs> Cause it really, you, I mean, the whole team needs to be in on it, you know, in on keeping that energy up, you know, if we had a tough loss, how do we turn that around and, and spin it in a way that's positive or motivating so that the next game, we're not still carrying that into, you know, our mindset. And so it really, it's, it's tough. Like, especially if you start the, even if you start the tournament off with an amazing game, you know, like how do you keep players motivated and, and keeping the pedal to the metal and like going forward and not taking anyone easily because we crushed them the first game. So it's, it's really, it goes both ways. You know, it's, I almost kind of prefer starting tournaments off with like very tough games because it kind of humbles you and it makes, it forces you to stay focused instead of obviously, you know, I love to win and like, crushing people is always fun, but like starting tournaments off with like a more challenging mindset I found is like helpful for team focus and, um, motivation, I think especially. So yeah, but it's, it's, it's challenging for sure to keep that focus. Who are some of the players in the beach handball that you look up to? Yeah. Wow. Um, so when I first started it, our coach was Brazilian. And so we would always, always, always watch film of the Brazilian national team, because I mean, they were dominant for so many years. They, they won the world championships in 2018. And, you know, they have so many amazing players. Their circuit is incredible down there. So these players have been playing forever. And so, you know, I'd always look up to the Brazilian pivot because I started out as pivot, which is just on the line. I mostly get all the alley oops for my team. They just fling the ball up there and I can catch and score. And that's like my signature kind of like position and shot. Um, so Renata is, um, a player, a pivot on the Brazilian national team who I've, I studied a ton of film and tried to try to play like her and try to, you know, just see what she does well and, and mimic that. Um, Camilla is also like the center back for Brazil. She was, she's kind of taking a break now, but I think she'll be back. I played with her over the summer um, in Portugal. She was over there playing the European tour and she's the most amazing playmaker. You know, she does all the fakes and she has a, her signature. Like she'll, you know, she's in the middle. She's kind of like the point guard of the team. She'll go like attack the gap and then the pivot will be in the line waiting for the alley-oop and she'll do a thing where she just like turns around and she flicks it back. And it's just, it looks so fun. It's like, like a trick play, but her, her fakes are so good. Her IQ is so high. Um, Ingrid is the goalie for the Brazilian team. She's probably one of the best goalies in the world. And so also got an opportunity to play with her this summer, which is so fun. Um, and so, yeah, I would say the Brazilian team, um, Asun Baptista is a pivot for the Spanish national team and she's incredible too. So I've watched a ton of film um, to try to play like her too. And so, yeah, it's, you know, there's so many, so many, so many good players out there that I just, you know, in the beginning, I like idolized and I still like look up to them, but now like after I've played quite a few tournaments with them and against them, it's like, uh, it's just, it, it's cool to be in that community now, you know, and, and to grow and learn together. Cause everyone obviously is still learning and trying to you know, train and be the best player they, they can. And to be in that camp is, is so great now. Um, so yeah. What is that like, obviously getting to meet your fans and having them ask for your autographs and photos with you? Well, I wouldn't say Beach Hamble is not that famous. <laughs> I think the only time anyone's ever asked for my autograph was down in Brazil when we played, it was the global beach handball tour put on by the international handball federation. And there are tons of little kids like coming to all of our games and 
like signing autographs on shirts and stuff it was just the cutest thing ever. So it was, you know, it was so, it was so, so sweet. Um, but I can't say I've ever signed any autographs <laughs> with other than little kids, you know, down in that, that tournament. So it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's such a cool laid back community though, of sport people. Like we're everyone for the most part is like down to earth and, you know, isn't, we're, we're in it to grow the sport together. And so it's not, yeah, I, I think it's, even if you're really, really, really good, like you're still a beach handball player and people of course look up to you, but it's more of like a tight knit community that people don't think any higher or lower of you because of your ability. Um, so I think that's also what makes it special is that everyone's, it's a good camaraderie in the sport. What is that like in getting to play with some of your teammates that also play beach handball with you? On the U.S. team mm -hmm. or? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's so special. Um, I've, one of my best friends I've met through beach handball and her and I are just like sisters, you know? And so that only, I only met her because of beach handball. Um, we actually applied for the amazing race. <laughs> and made it to the final round uh, we were almost on the amazing race um but they decided to go with someone another team but that's how close we've gone is that we just feel like we can take on the world and um you know it's it just it's made it so special that I can also compete really hard with her on the sand too like I'm offense she's defense and so together it's been cool to help grow this U.S. team and grow the sport and I've had her come over to play on my team in Europe too. So it's, it's just really special to, to compete together. What is that like balancing playing in Europe on a club team and also playing for a national team like Team USA? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I started this team, it's half Dutch, half American um, back in 2021 to give my American teammates the opportunity to play at the highest level in the European beach tour, which shortened its EBT. Um, and honestly playing on the same team with Europeans that have been playing forever has been so huge for my personal player development. And also for my other American teammates is because they view the game differently. They view it in a more foundational sense that they're transferring their knowledge from playing a lot of indoor handball to beach handball, which is really helpful. But then on the flip side, we bring in our different sports knowledges. You know, I, lean on basketball a lot. Like I lean on that knowledge. I played that sport for so long. And so bringing that new mentality to the game, you know, we can come up with some cool new plays that typically beach handball really hasn't seen before because it's so indoor handball focused. So it's really cool. You know, like when we're playing on the club team, it's, it's, I, I think I would say we probably learn a little bit more from the Europeans than they do from us, but I do think we spice it up a little bit because we do have like a weird style of play. And then we're, when we're all together on the U S team, we're all kind of crazy. And <laughs> you know, that's when it gets really interesting. You see some very unique playmaking. <laughs> um, so it, it's, I think it's just a different style of play. You know, I, I'm so grateful for both experiences because they both opened up different doors um, for, for me and my teammates. So just, I, I wouldn't have it any other way playing and play on both teams. What are some of your future plans for the beach handball moving forward? So I think that having beach handball as an exhibition sport in the Paris 2024 Olympics next summer will be a huge step for the development of the, of the sport and the, you know, raising of the awareness, you know, obviously that's with the hopes of it becoming an Olympic sport in 2028 in LA. And if you think about it, you know, in, in five years time, we have a lot of work to do to raise the awareness of the sport to, you know, even less than five years, like we need to get the sport to the point where it's undeniable that it needs to be included in the Olympics. And so we do have some other competition from different sports. I know flag football is definitely taking a big part of the market share within the international sports community. And, you know, so that we do have our eyes like, you know, trying to be strategic on how to grow the sport, not only, you know, to play it. I, it in one way, I wish that I could just focus on playing and just be an athlete, but for the betterment of the sport and the progression of the sport, like, also for opportunity, you kind of have to create your own opportunities as a player, like to push it forward and then to play it at a higher level. So 
it's, you know, through the efforts with my European club team, you know, we're making a ton of media. One of our clips on Instagram got like 8 million views. ESPN reached out just, you know, if they could repost it, which they haven't yet. I'm still waiting for that. It's been like a few months now. <laughs> so if we can get on ESPN, that would be fantastic. You know, so there's so many different avenues of like really pushing the sport forward and in future plans and growing that American circuit and tour for beach handball is also going to be huge. Um, so there's, there's a lot to do with a little time. So it's kind of daunting, but uh, you know, the sport keeps attracting interesting, competent people. And so I, I, we're hoping that we keep collecting these people who are passionate about growing and, you know, we're stronger together. So working hard to, to keep the momentum going and in, in building the sport. Of course, as a player, what would that feel like, obviously, to make it to the Olympics in L.A. to play beach handball as an Olympian? It's the dream. It's the absolute dream. And so, you know, as I touched on with the beach, um, the ANAC World Beach Games in, in Qatar, that was like the closest we felt to being in the Olympic Games. Um, you know, depending on how they do the selection for the uh, Olympic exhibition match next summer uh that hopefully some of us get the opportunity to to play in that and that would be incredible just to feel that energy and that vibe and, and just being there even though we're not technically part of the olympic games we would still be there um and so then for it to be a full-fledged olympic sport is the that's what we're all working towards so that would that's like the north star that keeps us honest and keeps us motivated um so it definitely is it would mean everything what advice would you have people that are looking to play beach handball in the future? Yeah, uh, reach out to any of us on social media. That's how I got involved. I saw a clip and I loved it. And so that's how it all started five years ago. So I would say, don't be afraid to ask, you know, don't feel, don't be afraid to try it either. Cause I know a lot of people when they think of, especially playing, like playing a new sport, but not only just a new sport, but a sport on the sand, it's, it's intimidating and daunting but it's sand. So if you mess up and you fall down, it doesn't hurt. So that's like the best part of playing the sport is that you can just be free and try anything and know that you're not going to be injured by falling on the ground. Like you are with like hardcore, hard surface sports. So it's really, yeah, just like not being shy, like just what the heck, try it. Like who cares? And then yeah, reach out of course, and ask questions, you know, as we're all building this together, we value different perspectives and insights. So it's, it's always interesting to talk to new players because they have different perspectives that we may have not thought of before. So it's really an open and welcoming community. And this is not just in the States. This is like globally. This is how the energy and the mindset is of, of the sport. Everyone's very open, very kind, and, and we want more people in. So we're really enthusiastic and warm um about people approaching us what advice would you give people that are looking to represent a national team on beach handball handball like team usa or canada yeah so you know we're always looking to like grow our player pool um because right now it is quite small in the states for as many athletes as we have our player pool does not even correlate to that at all even in the smallest sense so it's it really, you really do have a big chance of making a team, even if anything for a tournament, if you're an alternate, if someone gets injured, like there's a lot of opportunities for new people to come in and swoop a spot. You know, it's like we, our spots. Yeah. We have some players who've been playing for a few years, but like no one's safe. It's just like any other team. And especially with this, as small as our player pool is, I, I think I can probably speak to Canada as well. Um, if you're an amazing athlete and you have the right mindset and you could take one of our spots. So it's really, and it's the barrier to entry is so low compared to mainstream sports because we don't have that pipeline yet where people are scouted and they go through college and they, you know, it's all this complicated thing. Like if you literally just reach out to us and you come to a tryout or if you come to a training and you, you bring it, there's a high probability of you making a team. <laughs> So it's, you know, not, that being said, like we have amazing athletes already on our team. Like I love my teammates, but we know that our positions aren't safe. Like we, you know, it's anything could happen. Anyone could come in. So it's really 
yeah, it's there's there's a high probability at least being in the pool and then traveling to tournaments is another story. But yeah, why not try? That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? So my Instagram uh, handle is at Christine underscore, or no, I'm sorry. It's at underscore Christine Mansour. Um, and then I think that's all. I have Facebook, but I would say Instagram is probably the easiest. And then if you want to follow USA Team Handball, that's just at USA Team Handball. Um, our women's national team handle is um, at USA WBH, Women's Beach Handball. Um, and then the club team that I play on that I started is um, Handball Volendam Beach. So it's Volendam is just the name of a town that I um, played indoor handball with. Actually, it, it, they have a club team there. And then I started the beach team that's associated with the Volendam Indoor Club Handball team. And so that's why that's called that. So thank yeah. you again, Kristen Mansour, for your interview. Best of luck in your future as a U.S. beach handball athlete. Say that one more time. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck in your future. Oh, thank you so much, Brandon. This was so great. If anyone has any questions, always feel free to reach out. Always, always available. So this is a pleasure. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Kristen Mansour, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.